internationalization scheme. <laughs> 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 Business Lab. Hi everyone, welcome to the Business Lab podcast. And this episode is brought to you by our media and venue sponsors, Studio 5 Corp and Craft by 3. So today we have two guests, Mr. Shamir Wahid Shamir, who is the Honorary Treasurer of SMCCI and he runs Shamir Real Estate Asia Private Limited. And we also have Dr. Malik, who is the founder of Celera Rasa Nasi Lemak Private Limited, co-founder of Crave Nasi Lemak Private Limited, and founder of M3 Oasis Private Limited, who embarked on his journey in the family business in 1998. Thank you so much again for joining us for this podcast. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, um, thank yeah. you. This is the first episode. Oh, <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> And it's it's a heavy one. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a heavy one. It's on it's on the budget in particular. Uh, yeah. The budget was just released today, so mm. I think a lot of viewers out there, especially, want to see how it contextualizes to how it relates to them, mm -hmm. right? Uh, business owners, those of you watching. So, first question. Let's kick it off uh, to Shamir. With your extensive banking experience and role as the honorary treasurer of SMCCI, could you share with us your initial impression of this budget announcement and its potential impact on businesses? Mm. So just for context, this yeah. budget was just a finish announcement. They, they finished announcement like maybe what, an hour ago. <laughs> so we only have less than <laughs> half an hour to prepare our thoughts on it. But just at first glance, based mm. on what has been presented so far, I think some of the news are pretty good for our current SME landscape. I think we can address more later on some mm. of the specifics, but generally given where the economy is heading, I think that some of the schemes that they have put in place will definitely help our SMEs and their employees at the same time. Mm. So that's my takeaway. Uh, it sounds like uh, it's a positive outlook, a great start, kind of. I think there will always be potential for tweaks or mm. improvements to any budget. Yeah. So, but I think for a start, given where we are headed yeah. for 2024, mm. I think this is a pretty good start. All right. Yeah. Right. Let me add a bit. Yeah. I keep okay for scared, eh? <laughs> because yeah. I think this budget, eh, this yeah. budget is more of like, uh, bukan nak pada pandai, tapi more okay. like uh, um, making the business people to mm -hmm. to not get pampered. Mm. It looks like uh, more to. Um, Giving them something to work on. Okay. This is what I look at. Eh? Mm. Budget, yeah. Okay. So it's very exciting. Again, it was just released like what, an hour ago. So <laughs> mm. <laughs> there's still a lot to unpack. So we hope to glean a lot of insights here. So Dr. Malik, question for you. As a successful entrepreneur in the culinary industry, obviously, mm. how do you see the budget supporting businesses, especially in F&B? Um, the way I look at it um, is helping not so much. Hmm. The truth. Um, okay. the, his, there is a 50% tax rebate, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Um, I think there's a few things that his, uh, the, the DPM said. Mm -hmm. um, it would help more on, uh, like, like I told you just now, yeah. uh, more on uh, giving something to work on. Okay. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's more on there. I think the, the one that is going to help uh, the, on the food industry. Mm. Yeah. Mm, I see. Okay. Um, and so maybe Shamir, you can answer this. Yeah. So okay. for the enterprise support package, okay, it, see, it is a significant part of this budget 2024. Mm. How do you think the enhancements to the enterprise uh, financing scheme yeah. will benefit businesses? Yeah, I think for the enterprise financing scheme, especially for those who have not tapped the working capital loan, I think previously the limit was at 300,000. And then now it has been permanently raised to 500,000. But I think while this is good news, that means they can potentially tap additional funding to manage their cash flow yeah. just in case the business is not coming in as fast. Mm. At the end of the day, the SME will need to ensure that their bookkeeping mm. is in order, right? And their own credit. Yeah. rating with the respective banks are in place so if it is not in order you can have these schemes in place 
and yet they may not be able to tap this funding source. Mm. So just for context, how this enterprise financing scheme works is that the SME will then apply through one bank or two banks or three banks for a working capital loan and maybe bank A gives you 100,000, bank B gives you 100,000 and then bank C gives you another 100,000. Now these uh, loans are somewhat uh, covered by the government. Okay. So in the event of a default, mm -hmm. then the bank will use all the necessary internal means to go after these funds, these loans. And if they are unable to do so, then they will go to the government and say, hey, look, you, you guarantee a portion of this loan. Can I claim a portion of this? So to even get that, to even get that loan from the bank, firstly, you got to look internally mm. whether you have done all the necessary bookkeeping all in order. If you don't even get that in order, yeah. how are you even going to apply for the loan in the first place? Which is a problem which mm. our members yeah. and even some of the non-members outside SMEs uh, are facing because they are always uh, looking at firefighting activities day right? to day day to day right yeah. so where where do i have time to look at the back end so that's where our sme center at smcci can also share with them what are the gaps that they have in their business and then what are the different schemes that enterprise singapore has for them to tap on to help operationalize the back end so for example you if you have a problem with accounting mm -hmm. then you can use some of these schemes to yeah get the services of an accountant, mm -hmm. get your bookkeeping in order so that you can then apply for these loans under the enterprise financing scheme. So it's a bigger scale of things that the government has already put in place and it's whether you want to go out there and actually tap this properly. Mm. So I love how you clarified the air, you cleared the fog, like there's an uh, undertone to it that, hey, yeah, make sure your bookkeeping is ready. Why do you think, you know, this is so important? Like, why is this something that stands out? I think some basic financial knowledge is required mm. when in, mm. you want to run a business mm. because if you don't even understand what's revenue, what's profit, and profit, there are two types, gross profit mm. and net profit. So if you don't even understand some of these terms and you know, you're just treating the company bank account like a personal bank account, mm. then yeah, there are, there are going to be issues when you want to mm. tap the working capital loan under the enterprise financing scheme for sure because there is a required minimum bank balance that the banks would definitely want to see mm. in your bank account to ensure that, hey, look, if I want to lend this money under the working capital loan, yeah. this person can pay back or not, <laughs> right? Yes. So how do you ensure that? If let's say you're treating it like your own personal bank account, I earn $4,000 worth of sales this month and I need to pay for my mortgage. So I need to take out another yeah. $3,000 and I need to pay for my kid's tuition fee and I take out another $1,000, the company account left zero. Mm. Then which mm. bank wants to lend you money after that? Yeah, mm. oh, I think it's very important advice and uh, I hope it clears the air mm. a lot and set, set some context to this. Right? Uh, Dr. Malik, for yourself, as a business owner, how do you envision using this Skills Future Enterprise Credit Extension for your ventures like Crave Nasi Lama? Do you envision okay. yourself? Yeah. Um, skill Future. Skill Future is the a question. Have you tapped this before? Or not? I haven't. You haven't? You have not. I myself haven't. Mm. Okay. But my staff, yes. Your, your staff, mm. okay. We, 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 Galakan. We will like okay. them to take this opportunity to do it, uh, to go for the courses. Mm. We, we, we don't want them to be, um, hey, you stay as a cook forever. We want them to be a businessman also. Mm. You learn how to cook nasi lemak, you learn how to do business. That's it. If you want to do a, your own business, we said that go for the skill future. Go for it. Mm. That's how Crave. Uh, galakkan our staff to be there. Yeah. Mm. So I think I think this really helps. This what really helps us. Mm. Yeah. And I support your that one. The costing, mm -hmm. the bookkeeping. Yeah. Because numbers yeah. never lies. Yeah. Numbers never lie. Yeah. You can play with words, but number cannot lie. One is one. Mm -hmm. Seat can be seat where, but number cannot lie. Wow. Yeah. Okay. There's yeah. two entrepreneurs telling you <laughs> numbers are important. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we'll go to the next question. This is for Shami. Mm. The EFS enhancements aim to provide financial support for SMEs. Mm. How do you foresee these changes impacting SMEs? No, I think I've mm. sort of already addressed yeah. some of these uh, in the earlier, earlier part when I answered the question yeah. on the EFS, right? 
So of course, there are other schemes under the EFS which uh, may be beneficial to the bigger SMEs, mm. right? So especially when you look, you're looking at the sustainability uh, initiatives okay. that the government has in place. And of course, the AI, the artificial mm, yeah. intelligence uh, portion, which they, they mentioned. So if there are support schemes, uh, which are not EFS related, which can help some of these SMEs which are looking at these sectors, then I think they should go and look into the requirements of qualifying for these schemes. Yes, it can be a bit painful when you're dealing mm. with the portals, the business grant portals. <laughs> but look, if you want sort of, you know, help, then yeah. you also got to help yourself also, right? Mm. So I think uh, some of the SMEs can benefit from mm. some of the schemes in place there. But you know, Shami, when we, in our conversation here mm. at Dr. Malik, Shami, like there's a lot of acronyms being thrown around. Sometimes, mm. you know, people get confused, like, huh, so many schemes, I'm so yeah. confused. Yeah. What, what advice would you give people who are interested in, okay. in such schemes? What, what can they do? So, yeah. Just to give for context, yeah. right? So this is this podcast is under Singapore Malay Chamber hmm. and Commerce and Industry, right? That is the holding company. We have a subsidiary company. It's called the SME Center at SMCCI, right? Which has indirect uh, lines to uh, our Enterprise Singapore. Hmm. So now at SME Center, if you need assistance to understand all these different acronyms. We have staff there ready to guide you at free of charge. You don't even have wow. to pay anything because wow. it is their KPI mm. to go out there and educate people on all these different schemes that's available out there. So even right now, I believe they are reading up on all the different updates for the different schemes. Some schemes have already been existent, in existence since 2023, mm. 2022, mm. which they have really only updated it from time to time in terms of the numbers and whatnot. Okay. But at the end of the day, the team is already in place within SMCCI mm -hmm. to go and help these members understand what all these different acronyms mean. So if you don't know, you need to go and reach out to SME Center at SMCCI, any yeah. of our business advisors, and they can advise you which is the appropriate grant or scheme that you need to be looking at mm. based on where you are at in your business. So Dr. Malik, grants for SMEs are set to be expanded or redesigned. How can these measures, including support for going international, transform businesses uh, like yours in the culinary industry? Okay. Um, put me exa an example. Yeah. Um, my style of doing it is uh, I like to open shops. Okay. So my crave, we are opening shop, opening shops. So we open in Singapore, but currently we open like it. Mm. So then we are thinking of manufacturing products, FMCG. So when we are manufacturing products, we want to bring overseas. Because mm. I, I believe in getting people to know my product first before I open a shop. Okay. So then I think I approach SME for a, a few grants. Mm. So I think this is a good way of doing it. Right, Shami? Yeah. So again, we have to understand that Singapore is limited by real estate. I think it's one of the challenges. Too many branches already. Wow. Right? <laughs> right, where else can I go? You want right? to open more. Yeah. <laughs> I, want I want to open more, but I'm limited, <laughs> right? Yeah. So if you're looking to product manufacturing, yeah. let's mm. say he wants to package his sambal mm. into bottles, for example, mm. which is pretty common mm. in yeah. Malaysia, for example, yeah, or even Indonesia for that matter. Yeah. Then, of course, you need to figure out, okay, how am I going to source for the factory space mm. uh, there are going to be some costs if i want to go there i want to do some marketing promotions mm -hmm. so that's where i think one of the examples is the uh, mra grant which is the market uh, readiness awareness assistance grants market ready assistance grant so which is one of the grants available under the scheme of course you have your qualifying criteria so mm -hmm. just ensure that you have met all these criteria even before you even try to tap on this grant, then mm. you can go and go ahead and explore. But within uh, Malay Chamber itself, yes. if look, I want to go to Malaysia, yeah. I don't even know where to start, right? Yeah. Who to connect with, what are the resources available there, who are the partners that I can trust and work with. So that's where our business missions comes into play, right? Mm. Yep, yep. Tell, tell the viewers more about this. Yeah, so about the business mission. missions. Yeah. Okay, SMCCI does business missions from time to time yeah. to selected countries. Mm -hmm. So for example, it, up and coming, what I understand is that we are planning one to Malaysia. Okay. So okay. We, know, we yeah. know it's coming. We know it's coming. And we are planning, we are looking at partners there uh, who we can connect our businesses to. Mm. Then from there, you have a better understanding of the kind of schemes and grants that you can use to tap mm. to 
penetrate Malaysia, yeah. to set up shop in Malaysia, and who are the partners that you can potentially look out for. So take it like a sort of a business study trip, mm. but it is under business mission because why? Your trip is subsidized by mm. Enterprise Singapore. Wow. So assuming we do get the approval to go ahead, then assuming the cost to go is like a thousand dollars and arranging with all the parties, maybe yeah. you just need to pay three hundred dollars. Right, that's a good deal. I think it's a good deal, right? Yeah. To go yeah. there and actually learn on the ground what is happening in Malaysia and mm. what and how it can benefit your business since you have some limitations which Dr. Malik <laughs> is already facing. <laughs> <laughs> He wants to open more stores. I want to open more stores. Yeah. Bukan bukan tamak eh, bukan tamak. Tapi I just want to let people eat my food. Masya Allah. Uh, politics eh, politics. <laughs> <laughs> so Shami, on on that thread, right? Mm. Uh, the budget outlines details on skills led support for mm. employees and employers. Yeah. Right, including re-employment support. How do yeah. you think this will contribute to workforce development and mm. talent retention yeah. in the banking and real estate? Yeah. Industry, yeah. So not only in the banking and real estate side, mm. I think generally across the board. Okay. So you're talking about employers, employees, and laid off employees, right? Mm. The unemployed. Okay. So you have three different groups here, which our government has already in place some of these schemes. Mm -hmm. And I am approaching 40 this year, although I will not get the $4,000 grant yet. I know that. Now I know, know your that age. next year, in October, <laughs> eh, sorry, you know, by after October this year, yeah. I definitely can tap the grant, right? Okay. And I have not even tapped my own skills future credit. Oh, wow. Uh, be below the age of 40. Mm. So now I'm looking at a perspective as an employer. Okay. So what are the skills that I will need to look at? So maybe I want to improve my knowledge on digital marketing. So if you mm. just look at the list on Enterprise uh, Singapore website, you can you have all these different cost providers and some of the courses may cost $1,000 and you offset it against uh, the skills future credit. Maybe you just pay a small amount mm. for a subject which you want to grow and improve in. So now that's from an employer perspective. Yeah. From an employee perspective, maybe right now I am in a particular field, say in uh, human resource yep. or in accounting. Mm -hmm. So maybe I want to level up and I want to look at another sector, mm -hmm. maybe do a career change. Okay. So then I will look at from an employee, what are the channels that I can go to or what are the courses that I can go to, mm. which is supported by this Skills Future Enterprise Scheme. And then for those unemployed, yeah. then you also have similarly, right? Which sector do you want to go in and how are you going to reskill and how are you going to upskill? Which courses I want to go in? So many course providers there. All you need to do is sit down in, at your desk and just scroll through and see which sector you are interested in. Hmm. I like, I like the, the, the one that uh, DPM was saying that when you are uh, at 40 and above, yeah. you got a chance to go to Polytechnic. To, to mm. upgrade yourself and change mm. to a different career. Wow. You know, if you you never know. I mean, you are an engineer. Yeah. Um. Let me let me tell you a story. Mm. Sure. Tell you a story better, lah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, when I was the reason I am a businessman is mm. because when I was schooling at Singapore Poly. Okay. I was doing a part time uh, night class at Singapore Poly. I'm working with a company as a supervisor in a condominium. Mm. Mm. So I take care of three three condos. So I take care of three condos. So when the three condos, I take care of three condos, then that three condos get um uh the contract that ada lagi lah. So once the contract is done, they call me to the office. Hmm. And that is the day when I got married. Mm -hmm. The next day I they call me to the office. Okay. I'm supposed to go to the hon my honeymoon. Yeah. They call me. So there is like 50 people in the room. For a meeting, two names came out: my name and one guy. This guy is forty-one years old. Both of us got retrenched. Yeah. Well, I'm putting like got married the next day, got retrenched. But I'm still like twenty-six years old. But that guy is forty-one years old. He was crying and crying and crying. Those yeah. times, there's no help yeah. of this kind of. Then you go to schools, yeah. and this one is sponsored. Mm. It's all done by the government. I wow. think this is a good initiative that when I look at it, it feels, yeah. So, yeah, he, he can be a teacher, you know, because he's mm. a very good, because we lack of teachers nowadays. Say, so promote yeah. teachers pula, eh. <laughs> so, I think if, let's say, there's engineers, whoever yeah. feels like changing career, you can go to teachers, go NIE. Yeah, yeah, yeah why not? 
the, the yeah. Malay has, has said yeah. it. So okay, I think, I, idea I, keluar, I think okay. interesting about what you're mentioning is basically there are a lot more opportunities to like safety nets. Uh. There are a lot of safety yeah. nets for people at different aspects of their careers. You mm-hmm. know? So I think that's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a question for you as well. Mm-hmm. With your experience in food industry, how do you perceive the enhancements to the Workfare Income Supplement and Progressive Wage Credit Scheme in supporting low-wage workers? Oh, I think they, they they bring up the price to higher price, right? And then they still pay from 2003 to 2006. Mm. They went up, yeah. Um, as, a, as a boss, it feels, as an owner, it feels. But... As a as a staff, I'm I'm okay with it. You know, mm. no, I think I think we we should we should look at the the situation now. But there's a lot of things you have to look. You have mm. to look as a as a as a owner. Um, there's a few angles you have to look because it, if you bring up the wage, yeah, I have nearly three hundred staff. Mm. So mm. if you go up two hundred, there's two hundred times few hundreds. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um. Like I say, the in the in, in the before we start, I mean, before podcast is this budget is not about giving you money. This budget is about giving you to work on. Mm. So I think the owners have to work on on that. Yeah. But and uh, in the grand scheme of things, when you zoom out, hey, you know, it does benefit them yep, at that correct. level. Um, yeah. I guess uh, not many might have that same yeah. outlook. But I guess if you zoom yourself out, then probably you, you'll be able to see yeah. it. I think I mm. think most of the concerns of if our members, yeah. or even the smaller SMEs yeah. out there. Is again uh, cost, right? Mm. And when you talk about cost, there are two key costs mm. that any SME owner is facing. Yeah. One is rental, and one manpower. is manpower. manpower. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to these two costs, I think the schemes are in place not to help you reduce the cost. The schemes are in place to help you pivot mm. where necessary yeah. to s- maybe diversify your source of earnings, mm-hmm. be creative, expand. Your horizon, mm-hmm. yeah. create more income so that you can cover all these costs. Yeah. I think that's where we are we are leaning towards now. Mm. So that's the mindset we need mm. to have instead. Correct. Yeah. So as we wrap up, mm. right? Uh, could each of you share one key takeaway from the budget twenty twenty four announcement that you believe is crucial for businesses in your respective industries mm. or even in general? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Doctor Malik. Doctor, I start first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, like I say, um. It's more about uh, giving and work on it, mm. one, and the courses, the courses that is given after forty level up. That was really for me is a for good good for business lah, for 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 the the staff for the Singaporean, and a lot of people were saying that uh, Singapore is a tough place to tough place to stay, mm-hmm. which is actually not. Mm. I'm gonna say this, if Singapore. It's a place for you to work and stay happily. Mm. It's not to work, it's not to stay and suffer. Mm. That's what I think. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. How about yourself, Shami? I think Singapore has always been a very business-friendly place. Mm. You know, whether you are from overseas or whether you're local. So it is an opportunity for you to try and tap some of these schemes available. Yeah and actually grow your business or even sustain your business mm. in this coming year because we know that 2024 is going to be a very challenging mm. year. So it is something for the SMEs to... I'm going to address this from an SME perspective because of Malaysia, Malaysia Chamber's role to okay. uplift our Malay Muslim enterprises. So I feel that the schemes are in there and he has already been there for quite some time. So if you're not aware about what is going on you need to be aware mm. and if you don't know who to talk to to be aware of such schemes yep. then we are here to support you and we have the team in place to support you so I may not be fluent in the full budget right I mean some of the terms I don't even know <laughs> right so what more the the SMEs or even your home based businesses you know even a smaller SMEs who don't even know what revenue is mm. I think if you need to level up talk to us there are schemes in place. Mm. You you can always tap on this, upskill yourself as an SM as a business owner. Mm-hmm. Whether you're one man show, whether you're three man show or ten man show, hundred man show, it doesn't matter. It is there for it's quite wide in terms mm. of what it can cover. Yeah. And then from there we move on to the next to the next level. So my key takeaway from all of this is I think our government has 
casted the net quite wide. Sure, there might be gaps in between, but we take what we can get. We become more self-reliant mm -hmm. over time. And then we get whatever support we can get if we want to move beyond Singapore. Mm. Brilliant. Mm. Thank you so much for your time. Mm. And those of you watching, do follow SMCCI at our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok and LinkedIn. Uh, you guys can get more episodes like this, valuable stuff online. Mm. And of course, we have to thank our venue sponsor, Crowd by 3, our media magicians, Studio 5 Corp, for providing us with the great support and production. Till next time, catch you at the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.